Hello again YouTube, my name is Hans and welcome to my channel and to this episode of Dark Table Insights. If you're new to this channel, it's meant to be an easy to understand guide to Dark Table on a beginner to intermediate level. I think it's time to talk about tethering. You can hook your camera up to your computer with a USB cable and get your images imported into Dark Table as you shoot them. You can even remote control your camera from within Dark Table. So let's go! First, you have to connect the camera to the computer with a USB cable and turn the camera on. If your camera is automatically mounted as an external disk, you'll get a pop-up like this. Click Unmount and this will allow Darktable to get access to the camera. Then you can open Darktable. You can also have Darktable already open when you connect the camera, that doesn't matter. Start off in Lighttable mode. Open the Import module and you'll see a new line at the bottom, Tethered Shoot. This takes you into the Tethering view and you'll see this message at the bottom. New session initiated, capture job. Now in the left hand panel we only have the image information module. Across the top we have the normal top panel which we can hide by clicking the white triangle. Below is a black info bar. At the moment it contains the camera model and battery status. We'll get back to this in a minute. At the bottom is the film strip which will be filled with images as you take them. In the right hand panel there's the histogram at the top. And the first module below the histogram is called session. Type in the name you want for the shoot and click create. This names a folder according to the rules you have set in the preferences, just like when you import photos the normal way. If you're shooting through your viewfinder or live view on camera and controlling the camera locally, then this is it. You're ready to shoot. So here I have uh, prepared a little display of some uh, model cars. I'll take some pictures of them and as I do so you'll see that the film strip is getting populated by the images as I take them. But you can also control the camera remotely from Darktable. In this case it will be handy to see the live view on the computer. So open the live view module and click on the eye icon. This enables live view on the computer screen. The magnifying glass or the set key will zoom the window will zoom the view to 100%. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be possible to drag the view around. So there's actually little use of it. There are also buttons for rotating the view. And for flipping it. Below is a row of focus controls. Use the first and last buttons to adjust focus in large steps. And the, one, and the ones in the middle for smaller steps. The guides menu will give you a list of overlays to help with composition. Choose between grid, rule of thirds, metering, perspective, diagonal method, harmonious triangles or golden mean. Most of them will trigger a second menu where you can flip the guides to suit your needs. So if we use harmonious triangles then we can flip them. The golden mean gives you one more menu to choose from with different kind of golden mean overlays like the golden sections golden spiral sections or the golden spiral or indeed all of them 
This also can be useful to flip if you so need. Well, we'll take away the overlays, the guide, we'll take away the guides. At the bottom, there's an overlay menu. Use, use this to overlay another image over the live view. Selected image uses the image you select in the film strip. And for some reason it comes with uh, inverted colors, even though the overlay mode is normal. ID uses the image ID number in the image information module. That's up here. Image ID, it's this one. In that case, just type in the number in the box and it will show this image. In overlay mode, you can select an appropriate blend mode. All the normal blend modes, many of them. And you can also use a split line. between the uh, live view and the overlay image. This overlay feature may, uh, for example, be useful if you need to line up your next shot with the previous one for stop motion animation. And the next module is the camera settings. The most important button here is capture images. This is your trigger button. Click this to take an image remotely. Then there are a few extra capture modes up here. In delayed mode, use the timer setting to set the number of seconds before an image is taken after you click the trigger. So you can adjust the number of seconds here. And sequ sequenced mode will take a number of images in a sequence with one click on a trigger. So if we say three images, and we turn off the timer, capture, then it takes three images. Finally, there's bracketed mode, which lets you take exposure bracketed images. Brackets sets how many images you want on each side of the normal exposure. So set this to 1 if you want a normal and 1 overexposed and 1 underexposed. And to 2 if you want 2 overexposed and 2 underexposed. The bracket step setting will depend on how you have your camera set up. Usually exposure is adjusted in one third of a stop. So 3 steps is 1 stop. In this case a setting of 3 will give you 1 stop between each bracket and 6 will give you 2 stops. If you on the other hand have set your camera to use half stops, then a setting of 2 will give 1 stop per bracket and 4 will give 2 stops. So with, in my case with 1 in both boxes, you can turn off the count with one in both boxes, we'll get three bracketed shots. So let's try it. Okay. It says we need to set the camera to manual. So just a minute. Okay, so here we are back in manual mode. We have bracketing enabled. We have one bracket on each side of the normal exposure. And we will try with uh, two stops on each side, which is six steps. And capture. Dark exposure. Normal exposure. And bright exposure. So, next up is the properties section. Here we have access to focus mode, to aperture, shutter speed, ISO, and white balance. Some of these will depend on how you have set your camera before you connected it. 
If you have set your lens in manual focus, then both manual and the diff different autofocus modes will show up under focus mode. But at least on my camera it does not work to change to autofocus. If your lens is set to autofocus, then manual does not show up. You can switch between the different autofocus modes. If your camera is in aperture or shutter priority mode, then only the corresponding values are possible to change. In this case I'm now in manual, so I can have access to all the aperture settings and also all the shutter speeds. But say you have your camera in aperture priority, then you can only change the aperture, but not the shutter speed. To turn the wheel on the camera does not work while tethering. ISO and white balance are fully controllable. And uh, along the edge here is a column of eye icons. Clicking on these will toggle the co corresponding information on the info bar at the top. So here we can toggle on the focus mode, appearing up here. And then we have the aperture, shutter speed, ISO and white balance. The last section, additional properties, is not mentioned in the manual. And I have unfortunately no, no clue what it's about. Then at the bottom there are the metadata editor and and the tagging module which we know very well from before that's all for today as usual i hope you learned something if so give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't already i'd also be very happy if you check out my other outlets online all links are in the description and if there's anything about darktable you'd like me to talk about then let me know in the comments and I ho do hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye!